welcome to another video by DJSPRC. We have the Curiality Ender 2 Pro. And I want to, one of the first modifications I want to do to this printer is add some, a little bit more lightning. Lightning or lights? LED lights. Uh, I do have two other printers that I did put light bars on top of the gantry. That way, when I use uh, my octoprint with the camera, the bed is well lit up. And a lot of times, I'll be somewhere in my house. It's printing. I just can glance to my phone. I don't need to leave the main light of that room open. That's one of the reasons I do like doing this. But the difference between the Ender 2 Pro and the other guys, it has a bar on top. You're able to 3D print, something you can slide in the main bar to be able to illuminate the, the bed. This one doesn't have this. And looking at it, I was trying to determine how can I do this. I said, it may be for something I can add over here and just follows the, uh, the extruder. I said, why not? That's where I made this. Basically, this is a metal bar, similar to this guy right here. Um, these are a little bit harder to find now. I had tons of these. This is when, when I was doing car audio. Uh, I did 18 years of car audio. They used to come with radios in the past. Certain vehicles, you needed this to install a radio in it to keep the back end of the radio straight. I still have a couple of these left. And I said to myself, if I'm able to use these two main screw that holds the handle here, that way that just floats. I'm like, hmm, why not? Okay. That's what I did. Got two screws here. When you need the handle, it makes it perfectly. I just grabbed this, put some shrink tube, attach my wires to this end, and just grab some LED uh, string lights, strip lights. Went over here, cut it, soldered two wires over here, and ran it on top. I could have brought it over here, but it was getting too close to the handle. This is an older set that I had. This is another one that has a lot more LEDs. Um, well, yeah, but this is perfect. You don't need tons. And basically, what I did. If you remove the handle, this comes and sits right here. Now I said, okay, how I'm going to bring my main power from it and where when I grab my power to? Super easy. One of the things I did it is a portable printer. If I ever decide to bring this printer somewhere else, I don't want to haul another power supply. What I did, this power supply is at 24 volts. I got myself a buck converter that converts, basically, I, I take in the 24 volts down converter to 12 volts. What I did, I went underneath the machine, opened the main board here, and grabbed the main power that comes in from the power supply. Now, if it's this, I'm not going to show it how to do it here, uh, but it's not that difficult to do. You will need to remove these two bump stops because there's screws hidden underneath. Then you'll have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight screws total to remove this backing. And while doing this, you'll, you're going to expose the main board. And you'll see around here where the main power comes in the board. That's where I took my main power to my buck converter. In the back here, 
my main power comes out. This is 24 volts. I did put a small connector if I ever need to remove it for some reason. My buck connector connects to it. And then I have my output. I will 3D print a case for this because I just don't want to put it on top of the printer like this. But that takes care of my power. And how do I bring power to the, to the main gimbal or the main light? This channel is notched, notched, should I say? What I did, these are to be able to snap right here in the notch. I said, okay, this could work. Just pop it a notch, snap it in, no problem. Then I realized my main wheels were not sliding correctly. I went, okay, that's an issue. Then I was able to figure it out that this guy right here, I would be able just to slide my main wire inside. Take this guy, insert it inside the rail. And my wheels are still able to roll with no problem at all. Now, once I did this, but my way to, to the bottom here, and I was, I'm able to connect it to my buck converter. Now, before I do this, take this out, I need to pass my wire behind my main wheel. And once that's done, I'll be able to bring it in the, the notch on the bottom here. I know you can't really see it, but the rail here has a notch. I'm able to bring it out on the notch, bring this completely to the bottom. There's room to let that wire out, bring to my buck converter, and this prevents the wire from getting to my wheels. And once that's done, that's where I'm able to put this back in. Screw my handle, and then I just have a small wire come out and do my connection right here. Let's run the wire and I'll show you in a second here. Now I just passed my channel. You see it in red, easier to see. That will hide my wire. I did not go to the complete top because I need my wire to come out to the side to connect to my LED. And on the bottom here, you can't really see it, but my main connector comes out. You see it in yellow. I decided to use XT30s because they're, they're a small connector and I, they're nice connectors. Now I'm gonna bring my handle. Now on my handle, I had to modify it underneath, groove it a bit, but that doesn't show. And it doesn't really bother me. Screw one in, screw the other one in. Make sure they're tightened completely. And the bar is right here. It makes the work area perfectly. Connect these two together. What I might end up doing here is just putting maybe a piece of two-way tape just to keep it, the connector on top. That way it doesn't affect the, uh, the main shaft. And then turn around. Plug in my buck converter. Make sure it's the correct voltage. 
12 volts and there you go perfectly doesn't surpass the main uh, main arm it's inside and illuminates the tray perfectly if you guys have any questions or comment post them below I'll be gladly to answer you guys and don't forget to hit that subscribe button it does help the channel and hit that like if you did like this and thank you for watching